Hello and welcome to Irresistible You. I'm your host, Karen Seltz. Tonight we're going to talk all about friendship. And there are so many facets to this subject. And I wanted to share with you like why it's so important. Our relationships are the best way, in my opinion, to grow and to reach new levels. You know, we're always talking about like becoming our highest selves. In relationship, for me, is the easiest way to see myself, to see the parts of myself that I might not like so much and I might not be accepting at the moment. And to also see my brilliance, like to see where I'm shining because I know for a fact, I cannot see anything outside of myself. So if I see a friend showing up big in her power, being beautiful, being whatever it is, courageous, I know that that's a reflection of me. Whether I can see it or not is a whole nother story. So if you're new to me, let me just tell you the three things that are important to know. The first thing is that I have been at all the different places along the journey. I have overcome depression, anxiety, addiction, low self-esteem, low self-worth. So I know, you know, if you're in any of those places, that there's hope for you, that it's temporary, that, you know, you can look along the path and I can guide you and tell you some of the things that I've done, share with you what's worked for me. And maybe those will work for you too. So have hope if you're on in any of those places, know that there is hope for you. The second thing is that I consider myself to be a divine mirror. And what I mean by that is I'm able to see people through the eyes of the divine, through the eyes of God, and reflect it back to them until they're able to see it and get it for themselves. And it's a really beautiful thing. Like if people tell me, oh, you're, you're so confident. I'm like, well, you spot it. You got it. That's also you because you like I just said, you can't see anything outside of yourself. Or if people say you're such a bitch, you know, thank you. I know you are, but what am I? No, I don't say that, but. I think it. <laughs> and the third thing is that I am uncensored in my approach. I've given up the art of people pleasing a long time ago, and I'm willing to do and say whatever it takes, whatever is called for in the moment to shift people's perspectives. And oftentimes I'm not liked in the process and I'm okay with that. So let's rock and roll. Let's talk about friendship. I want to like get a little bit vulnerable here and share an experience that I had fairly recently with someone I've been friends with for about four years. And we had a friendship, you know, where we would go, we're both coaches. So we'd go to each other for advice a lot. And out of the blue, she sent me a text that it just triggered me in such a way. It triggered my old wounds of unworthiness and thinking that I wasn't valued. And then also it led me to this realization that she, I felt like she was looking at me like a transaction and she asked me to hire her in a text. So it just brought up all these old wounds. And I, you know, I've been sitting with them and I've been talking to people like, okay, what would you do here? Cause I'm not sure how to approach this. And I'm always willing to do the work to say, okay, where is this a reflection of me? How am I responsible? How did I create this? And you know, upon further digging, I have been judging her the whole time we've been friends, the whole time. And I didn't know that. I, you know, it was something that I wasn't admitting to myself or to her. And perhaps treating her like a place filler, like I felt she was treating me. So it's really fascinating when we're willing to look at our own stories. And it was through another friend of mine that I came to these conclusions. Like she was willing to go and not like hold me and say, oh, it's okay. You're right. You're right. All your uh, judgments and opinions about this are right. She didn't do that. She held me. She's like, okay, well, where is this you? Have you ever done that in your life? And for me, those are the types of friends that I want. The ones that are willing to not co-sign my bullshit stories, to not just go along with it to make me happy or to please me in the moment, but ones that are concerned with my growth as a human being. So moving forward with this, it's like, 
I'm evaluating, okay, which friendships are really in alignment with who I am today? Because as we learn and grow, part of the fallout is going to be friendships end. And it's maybe not forever, but maybe for now. Some people are not going to be in alignment. If you grow and they stay the same, it's not going to feel good to be together anymore. So it's you know becoming willing to let things go that are no longer serving us. And that is easier said than done. A lot of times people stay stuck because they're afraid. They're afraid of how people around them are going to respond and whether those relationships will stay intact. When we're looking at friendship, you know, there's several things that the questions that come to mind, like what is, what do you consider to be a good friend? And I don't use that word in my life, but I know most people do. <laughs> I believe that there are different levels if you're in alignment, if people's behaviors and characteristics are in alignment with yours, if they're not crossing boundaries, then maybe that's a good friend. Uh, for me, there's some reciprocity involved. Yeah. So it's not like a point system because that becomes transactional. It's like, oh, I held space for you last week and you know, now you owe me. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. And I have this accountability buddy that we've, we started out as accountability buddies because we just saw something in each other. And now we are beautiful friends. Like I love this woman, I cherish her. And she's actually the one that helped me through that that scenario with the other friend. And it's interesting, we meet once a week and often one of us will be in need of coaching. Like we'll be forgetting the truth of who we are. We'll be forgetting our brilliance. And it's not like we take turns. It's just like we hold space for each other, however it comes up and we just allow it to be. And we do not co-sign each other's bullshit. We hold each other accountable. Like, okay, what was more important than your word if we didn't honor our commitment for the week? Or how can I support you? What do you need? Oh, I need help with this messaging. Or, you know, it could be anything. It could be personal. But we go wherever we're called to go. And we're willing to be uncomfortable. So for me, part of friendship is that willingness to tell your friend she's got a booger in her nose. You know, she's got toilet paper on her shoe. She has spinach in her teeth. I love when people do that. Even if I don't know them, I'm, I feel so appreciative that if they tell me something like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you. It's better than walking around like that all day and all night and, or whatever, taking pictures with people and then you have a big spinach thing. So are you willing? Are you willing to be that friend that holds your friend high? And by high, I mean like, I see you in your power, in your greatness, and guess what? You're not there right now. What can I do to support you? For me, that's a good friend. It's somebody who shows up. It's somebody who is willing to receive. That's a big part of it too. You know, if I offer support, are they willing to receive it? And I'm going to give you an example of transactional. Many of us grow up with this. Like if somebody gives us something, even a compliment, like, oh my gosh, your dress is so pretty. Oh, thank you. I love your shoes. Before they even take the compliment in, they're like deflecting it. Like it's so uncomfortable to receive. For me, I call people on that. So I had a situation with a dear friend of mine a few weeks ago and She's somebody I know from the Dr. Joe Dispenza community. So we do this work daily. We do this work. And she told me, you know, what was going on for her. And she had some things coming up. And then before she was able to receive support, she's like, now tell me about you. I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. Did you notice what you did there? She said, no. I said, all right, take a breath. You get to back up you get to receive, you're not taking anything from me. I have capacity, and I'm gonna come back to that word. I have the capacity to hold space for you right now and to love you. So let's just sit. So we just sat on the phone, we sat there. She cried, she processed, 
I didn't say anything. And then we had this deeply mystical experience where without speaking a word, she was actually my roommate in, at the last Joe Dispenza workshop, the week long. And both of us, without saying a word, went back in time to that room we, we shared together on the sofa. And we shared this beautiful mystical experience. We were both in the same experience without talking about it until afterward. And it was maybe five or 10 minutes and our debrief of it, when we discussed it, was over an hour. So much happened. Like we, we traveled and we experienced so many layers of healing and uncovering of, you know, things that were ready to be healed, these patterns. And she felt seen and heard and loved. And like she didn't have to do anything. She didn't have to earn that love. She didn't have to, she didn't have to earn it, period. And many of us grow up as human doings. We think we have to do something to earn love. And oftentimes we do, but it's not the real thing. It is not real love when we earn it. Real love is given without any strings. Like, I don't need anything back from you. I don't want anything back from you. I'm here to hold space for you, to give to you. And learning to receive that, really coming to terms with your worthiness to receive that type of support is a big undertaking for many of us, including me. I mean, I've been working on it for the last year and there's still like levels that are breaking through still. So are you able to do that for your friends without speaking? Are you able to hold space energetically and hold them without checking your phone, without thinking about other things, just being present for them, whether it's in person or on the phone, on Zoom, whatever it is. It's your energy that matters. Do you have capacity to be that type of friend? Now, I'm going to go, I said I would go back to this word capacity. I love it. So capacity for me means I've been doing my work. If I feel unlovable at any time, I'm doing the work. I'm either meditating, praying, reading something that reminds me of who I am, or picking up the phone and saying, hey, I've forgotten the truth of who I am. I feel like I'm lacking something. Could you remind me? Or I feel like I'm unworthy. I feel like I'm unlovable. Whatever it is, whatever's coming up for me. If I share that with another human being who can see me in that place, it goes away like instantly. And I'm like, oh, duh. I just forgot. It's like the ego creeping in there with those little voices. And they're very subtle sometimes. The more work you do, the more subtle they become. The ego can masquerade as logic. Like it, it can masquerade as anything. <laughs> I love in the Native American culture, they call the ego voice, the pretender voices, because it's pretending. And it sounds very, very convincing. You know, we, it sounds like fact, truth, but it's not. And if I have a friend that I can call, and I have many on speed dial that I can call and say, hey, I've forgotten the truth of who I am. Can you remind me? And that's it. But I ask, like, do you have capacity to hold space for me or, you know, if I'm in a bad place, bad, like messy, where I'm crying and I'm processing emotions or I'm angry or sad, disappointed, I ask people, I'm like, do you have capacity to support me? I'm, I'm moving through some messy emotions and capacity makes it not personal. So if someone does not have capacity, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about them. Are they filling their cup? So in order to keep my capacity high, I meditate every day. I pray, I journal, I call friends, I contribute, I'm generous. And that you know, fills my cup so that when people call me that I care about, I have capacity for them. And they don't need to do anything. They don't need to earn it. They don't need to be any different. And I can remind them, like, there's not a single part of you that's unlovable. It's all the same. Like, it's all the same until we put a story to it. And I love that. So think about, you know, if somebody wasn't there for you, if you could pull yourself out of that situation and say, did they have capacity for me? Did I ask permission? Did I ask them if they had capacity? Were they feeling empty, alone, or afraid? 
Because if they were, they do not have capacity. They need to fill their own love bucket first. <laughs> then they, they'll have space for you. But if you look at that, and then I look at too, like certain friendships over the years. Like I had one friendship, I call it a friendship. And every time I would call her or she would call me, not one time, once I started paying attention in years, did she ever ask me a single question about myself? I, and I didn't even notice it. I was so hungry for connection that I didn't even notice it. I was just giving, 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 giving. How are you? How can I support you? And not once did she ever ask me how I was. And once I, once I got that up here, I'm like, oh, why am I putting this energy into this particular friendship? And I stopped and it just dissolved. It disappeared. She didn't reach out to me anymore. And it was like an energetic like break. And I didn't need to do anything. We didn't have a conversation like, oh, you're doing this. And, and it wasn't even like that. It was, we're just not a match once I realized it as I continued to do work on myself. So just start to notice that. Are there certain friends that you have in your life that when you see it's their, them calling you or you're like, like, oh, no, here we go again. Is it an immediate energy draw? Does it suck the life out of you? If it is, then you get to evaluate those things. Do you want to continue to be part of those? Because if you talk, you know, in business circles, they'll say you are a reflection of your five closest friends. So are you an energy suck to other people? If your friends are all energy sucks, then chances are you are an energy suck to somebody else. I hate to break it to you, but there's that uncensored part. So look at it because like attracts like. So I'm sure I had that woman that was, you know, not asking me any questions. Who was I showing up as that person to? I'm sure I was doing the exact same thing to someone else or she wouldn't have been in my life, right? It's not like I was a martyr or a victim. I attracted her because I was her. Maybe not to her, but to other people. So I invite you to look at your own behaviors and how you're showing up. Are you constantly asking for things or expecting things from your friends? Or is it like, you know, a, a generous, loving relationship where you respect each other, you build each other up, like you can do this. Like if, if your friends have dreams, do you say, that's not realistic? Or do you say, oh my gosh, how can you make that work? Instead of telling them all the reasons it won't work. So it's like all these little nuances that we get to examine. I, I just love, it's interesting. I'm in a new group of women that I had on my show recently from the Dr. Joe retreat that we just finished at the end of June. And we're in this daily WhatsApp thread where we're just commenting, we're building each other up, we're laughing, we're having fun, we're talking about our meditation experiences, what's working, what, what tweaks we've done to get to higher levels of consciousness. And I was reflecting just today and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all the work I've done that for a long time, I didn't think I was progressing. You know, you just can't see it until you look backwards. There's like that Steve Jobs quote, like you can't see it until you, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. And I'm sure I hacked that, but you get the point. <laughs> but all I was taking all these little steps, doing all these courses and inner work and healing myself. And I didn't realize until today, really, I was in um, processing one of the messages that one of the women left. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look who I've become in order to attract this level of friends. Like, holy shit, these women are doing the work. They are magnificent. They're powerful. They're courageous. They're like in it. And I'm like, so that's me. It's got to be me. Like, I can't see anything outside of myself. I say that all the time. So I, I was able to acknowledge myself for the quality of friends that I'm now attracting. And trust me, for many, many years, I was not able to acknowledge myself for much at all, much at all. Like, I thought so little of myself that look at the friends I was attracting, right? So 
It's really interesting. I love relationships in general because they are the quickest way to grow. And whether they're romantic or friendships, close friendships, they're going to bring up things in us and they're going to show us what's ready to be healed. Now we can stay by ourselves. We can go up on the mountaintop and om and om and om. But it's much, much quicker to heal this stuff when you have somebody reflecting back to you who you're being. And I just love this so much because, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, they, they hear about projection and they think it's only the negative stuff. And I'm here to say, nope, it's all of it. It's all of it. So when you follow a celebrity or an influencer and you think, wow, I could never be like that. Well, bullshit, because you already are. You already are like that, or you wouldn't be able to see that quality in them. So own it and start asking your subconscious mind, like, show me how I'm like that. Show me how I'm powerful. Show me how I'm courageous. Show me whatever. And it will find it for you. It will find, and I'm sure if you're really, really serious and, and you take this on, you will be able to find them yourself. You'll be able to find evidence in the past, like in your story, you'll be able to find these little nuggets of times when you were courageous or powerful or whatever you see in somebody else. So take it on, really take yourself on and, you know, go deep, examine yourself. And I love the exercise of, I'm going to give it to you. Okay. So if you get, I call it a judgment journal, but it could also be opinions, whatever. And it, I like those little notebooks that fit in your purse and you just write at the top of one page, my judgments about myself. And then you skip a lot of pages, depending on how judgmental you are of yourself. And then you write my judgments about others. And you just do it for about a week and you'll notice patterns emerging. So your judgments of yourself, I'm lazy, I'm fat, I'm ugly, whatever it is, I'm stupid, I'm not enough, I'm unworthy, I'm unloved, whatever it is. Um, it could also be your good judgments, like, wow, I, I kicked ass today, I'm powerful, I'm efficient, I'm smart, I'm, I look good in this, I'm sexy. Yeah, it could be, it's all of it, it's not just bad stuff, it's everything. Like, what are your thoughts about yourself? So that part, I'll get to in a second. And now your judgments about others, same thing, same exact thing, the positive things and the negative things that you notice about other people. And any, anytime you have an opinion, and a lot of people are trying to get rid of their judgments and good luck with that. Good luck. You're human, <laughs> I assume. So just keep track of them and like, and then detach from the meaning, like, oh, interesting. I think that that woman is prettier than me. Well, that's that comparison thing. Okay, she's pretty, she's smart, she's thin, she's stupid, she's fat, she's ugly, he's um, a bully, whatever it is. Write all of it down, every single bit of it. And then after a week, evaluate it. And I'll give you the key now. I hope this doesn't spoil it, but. Your judgments about yourself are the things, they're your conscious judgments. You already know you think these things about yourself. They're no secret. Your judgments about others are your subconscious judgments about yourself. So these are the things you secretly think or believe about yourself that you're projecting out onto other people. And it's all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. So play with it, have fun. Like, oh, interesting. I didn't know I thought I was hot. I didn't know I thought I was better than everybody else. I thought I was a piece of shit, like interesting, like fascinating. So it's, it's really enlightening when you do that. And one of the, the exercises I like to play with when people get triggered by their friends, I ask them, okay, maybe you wouldn't do what your friend did, but what are the characteristics that your friend showed up in? What was she doing? Who was she being? In, those mo in the moments of whatever this thing is that triggered you. Well, she was being judgmental. She was being bitchy. So you write down these characteristics. Um, she was being selfish. She was being self-centered. She was being petty. And then when you're empty, you go through it. Okay, when in my life have I ever been uh, judgmental? When have I ever been petty? When have I ever been selfish? And trust me, you're gonna find them. 
and then it's easier to say, okay, and was I lovable when I was being that way? And you might not be able to say yes, but you might be able to love somebody else. Have I ever loved anybody who was being judgmental? Well, yeah, I loved my mom. Did, have I ever loved anybody who was being petty? Have I ever loved anybody who, if you can't love yourself yet, the goal is to eventually get to the place where you can love yourself no matter what, no matter how you show up, because you're lovable no matter what. You don't have to earn it. <laughs> so it's learning to love all of it because we are holistic beings. We have every single characteristic within us. And it's only when we are rejecting parts that we will project them onto other people. And that's why it's so important to have relationships because you can see the parts of yourself that you're rejecting or that you're like saying, oh no, that's not me, I'm not powerful, which is also, you're rejecting that part. So it could be like, I, she's a bitch or it could be she's powerful, it could be both. Um, so if you look at other people and your opinions about them, you can see the parts of yourself that you get to integrate. And that's the work and it's fun. And you can say, how can I integrate it? How can I be powerful? How can I be courageous? Whatever it is that you see out, out here, you get to bring it in. You get to bring it in and welcome it and play, have fun with it. If I could say anything, it's play. So I'm gonna leave you with this. What kind of friend are you? And it's not, remember, there's no judgment. Like you, it's not like you're a good friend or you're a bad friend. You probably are both at the same time with different people, right? Sometimes you could say, oh, I was a bad friend. I didn't show up for you. When you look at it, like, like I was talking about with capacity, you can have more compassion for yourself. You can say, I didn't have capacity. And you can clear it with your friends. You can say, I, you deserve better. And I realized that I wasn't filling myself up. I was like, just like pouring everything out. And I didn't have capacity when you needed me. And I feel really horrible about that. But it's having those conversations is being willing to get deep and to share what's really going on for you. Like what's the stuff that would create emotional intimacy for you? What's the stuff that you think if anybody knew this was about me, they would reject me. They wouldn't want to be my friend. They would leave me. That's the stuff you get to start sharing little by little, like not, don't vomit it, don't give it all to them. And then when I was three, and then when I was five, no, just tell them the important things. Like something came up for me the other night that I shared with my boyfriend. And it was, um, it was related to something that happened with money but it had to do with trust and how my trust was broken at a very young age. And it was really difficult to share this with him because I was in it. And it was, it was simply this, that when I was maybe four or five years old, we had horses and my brothers and I were outside with the kids of um, some family friends and the grownups were all inside. And my oldest brother said, hey, Karen, go grab the fence, it's not on. And so being little and trusting, I'm like, okay. So I grabbed the fence and if, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I stuck and I'm like, <laughs> and you know, going through my little brain is, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die here. Cause I was stuck, I couldn't move. And it was painful and it hurt. And then finally, you know, the current alternates, it broke and I went flying backward and then I was crying. And then my brother and the friends were all laughing at me. And I like thought I was gonna die and they were laughing. And so in my little mind, I made up, okay, you don't trust anybody. You're on your own. You are on your own. You can't trust anyone. And so I also made up like people, if I believe them, I'm gonna look stupid. If they're lying to me, I'm gonna look like an idiot. And I do not want that. I will avoid that at all costs. So I grew up not trusting anybody. And, and it bit me in the ass. Like it cost me so many relationships because I didn't trust people. And you know, good people will only put up with that for so long. So when I was able to share that with my boyfriend, I was like, he just held space for me and he held me. He's like, oh my gosh, yeah. 
and he got it. He didn't have to say anything. He didn't have to fix it, but he held space for me. And it gives him some insight into some trust issues and why I don't like to look stupid. And that this particular situation I was currently dealing with, I was stupid. Like, I mean, not to judge myself, but I, I was stupid. <laughs> and it's okay. I'm still lovable. Even though I do stupid things sometimes, I'm still lovable. So where can you cut yourself some slack? Where can you give yourself grace and say, no matter what, I am lovable. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Irresistible You. I'll see you right here next week. Mwah.